Good afternoon from Miami Beach. This is Dr. John Bennett for Neurosurgical TV, televising another uh, presentation of the Association of Future African Neurosurgeons. They have a weekly uh, webcast. We're joined with three neurosurgeons today. Uh, let's start off before we turn it over to uh, Dewin Sachimba, who's going to talk about management of traumatic brain injury at a resource restricted center. Let's meet the guests first. Hello, Marco. Well, hello, guys. My name is uh, Marco Meloni. I'm a consultant neurosurgeon in uh, Gravedona. Nice to meet you again. Uh, well, welcome, uh, Marco. Dr. Cabulo. Okay, my name is Cabulo from Democratic Republic of Congo. I'm currently a final year neurosurgeon resident at the University of Zimbabwe. Okay, welcome, Dr. Kabulo. Uh, Abdullah, Jamo, could you please introduce yourself? Go ahead, Abdullah. Are you, are you there, Abdullah? He may have stepped away. Uh, let's go. Yes, I'm, I'm here, please. I'm okay, here. could you please introduce yourself? Okay. Um, I'm Dr. Abdullah Jimo. I'm a Nigerian neurosurgeon and associate professor of neurosurgery. Uh, I'm currently in Rabat, Morocco for a, a fellowship training in a gamma nerve stereotaxy and a functional deep brain stimulation neurosurgery. Very good. We're going to have to get you to do some presentations. That's right. Um, I'll do that. I'll be glad to do that. Okay. We'd love to have you. Okay. Uh, uh, Zolo. Hello, Zolo. Go ahead, Zolo. Let me unmute you there. Go ahead. Are you there, Zolo? Perhaps not. So uh, Zolo has to Zolo has to leave. He has issues with the network. And oh, okay. Yeah. No, no problem. Fortune, Fortune, could you please introduce yourself? Yeah, Fortune. I'm Fortune Gantui. I'm from Benin, but I live in Morocco. I'm a neurosurgery resident in the Asanto University Hospital of Fez. It is in the northern of Morocco. Thank you. Okay. Uh, welcome again. Um, Musindo. Musindo. Yes, yes. I am I'm, I'm Agush Musindo, neurosurgery resident of Mozambique. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Very, very good. Welcome. Okay, mom. There's uh, Maurizio. We haven't introduced you uh, this one. Are you on Maurizio? Yes. I'm Maurizio Yavangeli, neurosurgeon in Ancona. I'm a full professor at the University, Polytechnic University of Marche, here in Italy. Okay, well, welcome, Maurizio. Okay, very good, uh, Dawin, it's all yours and welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Dawin Chimba, uh, fourth year medical student from Copa Belt University, Zambia. Uh, I'm happy to be here to present uh, even uh, this case. Uh, so, so I'm Darwin Schember, uh, fourth year medical student from the Copper Belt University, uh, Zambia. Uh, so I'll be presenting on uh, management of traumatic brain injury uh, in a resource restricted uh, center. So it's a case report. Uh, so however, even though it's uh, a case report, I'll first try to give uh, a brief background about Zambia. Yeah, uh, and then yeah, I'll go into the bottom, the, yeah, there's an the option to make it bigger. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Okay. So, <clears throat> so my outline, uh, just the previous slide, please. Okay. So my outline of the presentation, we have uh, the background, just uh, uh, something about Zambia. Then we're going to the, the case report itself, where we have uh, the introduction, the case report, uh, investigations that were done, the treatment uh, and follow up, then uh, we have discussion and conclusion, then the references. Okay, so next slide. So basically the reason why I want to give uh, uh, the background about Zambia is because the, the, the way the patient was managed probably is not the most ideal way of managing the patient uh, according to the protocols. So there are some factors that uh, contributed to the patient being managed the way uh, he was managed, and that's what I want to first bring out. So Zambia is a, a landlocked country uh, in the south, uh, south Central Africa. Uh, so it, is, uh, uh, it attained independence on 24th October 1964, and we celebrated independence just a few days ago. 
So it is headed by the president. Uh, the current president is uh, His Excellency Dr. Ed Kachagolongu, who is the sixth president uh, from the time Zambia attained uh, its independence. Next slide. So that's just uh, the map showing uh, where Zambia is located in, uh, on, on Africa. Uh, next slide. Okay, so that's also just the map of Africa and then there's uh, the, the flag. Uh, of Zambia. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so administratively, uh, Zambia is divided into nine provinces, uh, sorry, uh, 10 provinces, uh, which are subdivided into uh, 118 districts uh, with 72 tribes. So the capital city is Lusaka. Uh, it has Zambia as a youth, as a youth pop, uh, population of about 17 million and is central. Uh, uh, Concentrated around the economic uh, hubs of the country, so the population is uh, the population growth is estimated at about uh, two point nine three uh, percent, and the average uh, life expectancy is about uh, uh, fifty years. Okay, next slide. So uh, just uh, briefly about economics uh, concerning Zambia. So the main economic activities. Uh, that take place in Zambia include uh, first uh, mining. So the major uh, uh, the major mineral that is mined in Zambia is uh, uh, copper, which contributes to about 70% of the export earnings. However, there are also other minerals such as uh, cobalt uh, and so on. So the the second act uh, economic activity that uh, takes place is uh, agriculture, uh, mainly maize. Then uh, there's also tourism. Uh, uh, where there's woodlife, waterfalls such as the uh, the Victoria Falls, and some other uh, historical sites. Then there's also energy and uh, manufacturing. So those are the, the the economic activities that take place. So with a uh, a per capita uh, uh, gross uh, domestic product of uh, around uh, one thousand seven hundred United States dollars, Zambia is uh, referred to be uh, a low middle income country. So, and about 60% of Zambia's population is, uh, still lives in uh, rural areas uh, where uh, they depend on subsistence agriculture for their livelihoods. Then about 60% of the total population of Zambia is below the recognized national uh, poverty line, uh, with much of this concentrated in rural areas. So, uh, uh, like I mentioned, on the economic activities that, that take place, uh, uh, where I mentioned that uh, one of the economic activities that take place in Zambia is mining. So uh, Zambia's economy has uh, relied, uh, for many years it has relied uh, heavily on copper, uh, but uh, this, this uh, uh, employs less than 2% of the population. But uh, the Zambian government is uh, pursuing an economic diversification uh, program to reduce the economy's reliance on copper industry. Um, so uh, on healthcare, uh, so uh, right now the, 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 the government of Zambia is uh, focusing on uh, what is called uh, the universal health coverage, uh, which is a global health policy agenda that has been uh, adopted by the government of the, uh, the Republic of Zambia as one of the targets uh, of the uh, sustainable development cause, uh, that is number, number three, uh, which is to ensure health li uh, lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. So um, there's, there's, uh, there's so much focus by the government on the provision of a, a continuum uh, of care uh, with particular emphasis on uh, on promotion preventive uh, uh, promotional preventive uh, curative and uh, rehabilitation services uh, the provision of a, a continuum uh, of care is challenged by by the burden of diseases uh, in Zambia which is very high and characterized by uh, prevalent, high prevalence of uh, communicable diseases and emerging burden of non-communicable diseases. So basically, uh, in Zambia, there are uh, quite a number of uh, communicable diseases as well as non-communicable diseases. So the, the, the government uh, of Zambia is trying to reduce 
uh, on, on, on those uh, communicable as well as non-communicable diseases. Uh, so this has had a very uh, significant impact on the morbidity and mortality uh, levels across the country. So in, uh, just something about uh, uh, key determinants of health. So in Zambia, the health of individuals and communities is to a large extent determined by uh, the, env the environments and circumstances in which uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, in which they live and operate. Uh, so these include the social and economical environment, uh, the physical environment, and the person's individual characteristics, uh, behavior, and circumstances. So if we look at the WHO, uh, uh, behavior, all those they come into play in determining uh, someone's health. So even uh, even in Zambia, those are some of the determinants of uh, 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 Next slide. Next slide. He's saying next slide. Uh, next slide. It's just a, a, a picture showing the, uh, some of those determinants of health, uh, like I mentioned. You can go to the next slide. Okay, so in Zambia, in, in the Zambian context, the general challenges uh, to health are for all uh, are as follows. So one, uh, the issues of poverty. Okay, so like I mentioned uh, earlier, that about sixty percent of uh, of the entire population is still living uh, uh, under the 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 the, the, uh, the, the standard uh, uh, poverty line. So more of which most of these are concentrated in the rural areas. So when the people are not able to uh, uh, these, these uh, healthcare services, then other than that, there's also as much two types of which of those they have different uh, social and cultural uh, 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 considerations. So because of that, uh, you, you, you discover that uh, uh, patients probably respond uh, differently. Or rather, they, 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 it's not always that someone will go to a health facility, others will uh, resort to traditional medicines and, and things like that. Then uh, access to safe water and uh, sanitation. So if there's no safe water and sanitation, uh, we find that uh, uh, there are a lot of people that will be presenting probably with uh, uh, waterborne diseases, foodborne diseases, and so on. Then there's also a burden of malnutrition, uh, education aspects, and uh, occupational health. You can go to the next slide. Okay. So health services in Zambia are delivered in, uh, in a services delivery structure uh, aiming at providing health services as close uh, to the family as possible and with a primary health care approach. So to achieve this, the services delivery system was designed uh, with the following uh, uh, structure. Next slide. So first of all, we have uh, 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 people, uh, rather the patients can be treated at a uh, community level, where basically sometimes we have uh, what we call community health assistants. Who are, who are there to, to, to attend to patients. Then from there, we have uh, health posts, we have health centers, then we have a uh, first level hospital, second level hospital, and a uh, third level hospital. So that is basically the structure in, uh, of uh, healthcare uh, delivery. Uh, we can go to the next slide. Okay, so each of these uh, levels of healthcare delivery faces enormous challenges, which include infrastructure. So infrastructure uh, at different uh, levels of healthcare delivery uh, has remained a challenge. So right now, uh, the, the, the government of Zambia is actually uh, trying to, uh, to build more uh, healthcare, uh, uh, healthcare centers, uh, more hospitals, including special, uh, specialized hospitals. So, but in the recent past, it has been a challenge where, uh, especially in rural areas where most patients are not able to access 
uh, healthcare services. But right now, there's quite some impressive uh, works that are going on, trying to, uh, to make sure that uh, people are able to access healthcare services. Uh, next slide. Okay, then next we have uh, uh, medical imaging and uh, laboratory services. So we find that, uh, especially when it comes to, uh, I think even the previous uh, presentation it was mentioned that uh, when it comes to uh, diagnostic uh, techniques, especially imaging, uh, it is it is a, it is quite a big challenge. Uh, challenge. However, we find that uh, in most centers they, there are no CT scans uh, and other uh, proper investigative uh, uh, techniques. Then uh, the other challenges on uh, human resource. By the way, these are just some of the challenges uh, that I tried to pick out. Uh, human resource. So currently, the doctor-patient uh, ratio uh, stands at about uh, uh, one, uh, one to about fifteen thousand uh, patients. So, like I mentioned, uh, in Zambia, uh, the population is about uh, seventeen million. So, out of that, about one uh, about one, one one doctor is going to handle about close to about. Uh, uh, 15,000 patients, uh, which is quite low uh, compared to the recommended WHO uh, standard. Then uh, the government of Zambia, through the Minister of uh, Health and Minister of Education, uh, has embarked on training doctors and specialists to meet the WHO uh, recommended uh, doctor uh, population ratio. Next slide. Okay, so uh, uh, on health insurance, Zambia has uh, in a long time, not had any uh, uh, health insurance scheme. However, uh, after a lengthy consultative uh, process, which began in the year 2012, uh, and after various studies were taken, the National Health Insurance Bill was uh, finally uh, assented, assented to and is now uh, a law in Zambia. Next slide. So the law is, uh, is known as uh, National Health Insurance Act 2 of 2018. So the National Health Insurance Scheme is or will be based on, uh, on the guiding principles of uh, universality, social solidarity, uh, equity, affordability and uh, efficiency as well as effectiveness and accountability. So this, uh, this, uh, this national health insurance scheme is aimed at covering all Zambians uh, despite, of, uh, despite their race, despite their economic status, despite their religion, uh, religious affiliations or political affiliations. So it is basically aimed at uh, meeting all sectors. So you can go to the next. Okay, so now I want to go into the, the case report itself, which is a uh, management of trauma restri uh, restricted center. So, uh, uh, to be so it has, it is challenged and uh, uh, it contributes significantly to mortality and uh, morbidity in a, in a good number of uh, trauma patients. Okay, then uh, some of the causes you can go to the previous slide, please. Okay, so some of the causes of uh, uh, traumatic brain injury uh, include uh, falls, uh, uh, road traffic accidents, and uh, violence, as well as uh, occupational uh, accidents. Then traumatic brain injury is a, a public health concern, like I mentioned, uh, and worldwide, and is still being managed by general surgeons in most low uh, and middle income countries, including Zambia. Uh, so surgery is uh, one of the neglected areas uh, of health, uh, of health care uh, uh, delivery. And in order to achieve, uh, like especially in Zambia, to achieve this, uh, the universal uh, health uh, coverage, there is need to incorporate a surgery in the primary health care. Now, uh, in low, in low uh, mid-income uh, countries, the uh, access to emergency and uh, essential surgical care, as well as anesthesia, is quite, is quite a challenge. And that's why management of uh, this traumatic brain injury 
still remains a challenge uh, in, such, in such settings. You can go to the next slide. Okay, so this is a case of uh, a 42-year-old man who presented, uh, uh, who presented with a 11 uh, days history of headache, aphasia, uh, right-sided hemiparesis, uh, which started two days post interpersonal violence. So he presented to the, to the facility with uh, uh, a GCS of uh, 15 out, um, uh, 11 out of 15. Uh, systemic examination was, uh, uh, there, was, there were no abnormalities that were detected. The patient was uh, hemodynamically stable. So like I mentioned, this patient presented to the hospital, rather to our facility, 11 days after the incident had happened, after he was, uh, he was involved in uh, an interpersonal violence. And then uh, he only developed the, the symptoms uh, two days later. So this was, this was uh, 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 some case that was quite uh, surprising because we couldn't initially think of uh, 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 a uh, presentation, like uh, uh, things to do with uh, the, 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 uh, the, the lucid interval and so on. But uh, the patient uh, developed those symptoms, like there was no loss of consciousness, uh, uh, there were no convulsions that were there. He only presented to the uh, or he only developed those uh, symptoms uh, two days after the after the, the trauma uh, uh, to the head. So the main uh, the main uh, complaints were uh, headache, like I've mentioned, aphasia, right sided and paralysis, uh, and 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 so on. You can go to the next slide. So on the investigations that were done, uh, first we did uh, a full blood count. Uh, which was normal. Uh, the kidney function tests were, uh, were normal. Then on imaging, now I must mention that uh, this patient uh, were only able to take this patient for for uh, for MRI. Uh, about uh, that was about uh, um, about 22 days after the, the after the incidents had, had happened. Now, what, what actually happened was uh, when the patient came to the, to the, to the facility, a uh, CT scan was ordered. Unfortunately, the hospital CT, uh, CT scan was not, was not working at that time. So we had to rely on, uh, the, uh, on a private hospital uh, for, for CT scan or MRI. But that made uh, the expense, rather the, the cost of, of the patient having that MRI done quite, uh, quite high. So the patient managed to get uh, enough funds to go for, for the MRI uh, about 22 days uh, after the trauma, which was about uh, 12 days uh, after the patient presented to the facility. So uh, the, the, the MRI showed uh, occipital epidural hematoma, uh, cerebral edema, but there are no basal uh, skull fractures. You can go to the next slide. Next slide, please. Okay, so what was done for the patient? Uh, initially, when the patient uh, came to the facility, there was initial assessment and management. Uh, like I mentioned, this patient came, uh, he was hemodynamic, uh, hemodynamically stable, and there were no uh, major signs in this patient. So the patient was put on uh, IV fluids, uh, basically maintenance fluids, then I uh, was prophylactically covered on antibiotics, because he stayed in the hospital for quite long, not really because of the of the traumatic brain injury, but because of the fact that it was uh, he stayed in the in the hospital for for quite some time. Then uh, on uh, on day eleven post admission, after the, the patient was admitted, uh, the patient was taken to uh, to theatre for craniectomy. Uh, then after craniectomy was done and uh, drainage was uh, of the uh, hematoma was done, uh, a drain was left. Uh, uh, on the side of, uh, of the craniectomy. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Next slide. We, do, you want, do you want to move past this? Okay. So uh, post-operation, uh, sorry? Go ahead, sorry? go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. So postoperatively, uh, the patient was taken to the intensive care unit. Uh, then on day one, post the craniectomy, the power on the 
uh, right upper limb and on the right, uh, right lower limb uh, was uh, became one out of five from the initial, which was uh, zero out of five. Then uh, by day two, it was uh, five out of five. Then a uh, further series of reviews uh, uh, showed that the patient was uh, uh, was was improving and uh, the patient recovered uh, fully. Next slide. Okay. So on my discussion, uh, just basically about uh, traumatic brain injury, I think it was uh, covered by uh, Zolo a few weeks ago. Uh, so uh, uh, traumatic brain injury can, uh, can be uh, clinically graded uh, uh, depending on the GCS, as uh, that is the severity score, uh, as uh, mild, moderate, or severe. Then it can also be classified as primary or secondary. Uh, then when you look at uh, the Monroe hypothesis, where we look at uh, the, the fact that the, 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 the cranium is a fixed space containing of uh, uh, the brain tissue, blood, and the CSF. So if there's increase in any of uh, these, uh, there's going to be a compensatory decrease uh, in the other two. So if we have, uh, uh, when you look at uh, uh, cerebral perfusion pressure, it is a, fa a factor of uh, uh, mean arterial pressure and uh, uh, intracranial, uh, intracranial pressure. So when there's increase in intracranial pressure as a result of uh, increase in the in the three components of the cranium, then there's going to be a decrease in the uh, uh, cerebral perfusion pressure. Then this will ultimately uh, uh, compromise uh, the 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 the, uh, the metabolism, the cerebral metabolism, uh, due to hypoxia. Then there's also need there's need to to maintain uh, cerebral perfusion pressure as well as oxygenation. Next slide. So uh, on my conclusion, uh, so like like I've mentioned, this was a case that was done at a. Uh, 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 a resource restricted center, and uh, like I, like we have seen from from how the the patient was managed, it is not the ideal way, uh, or rather according to the protocols uh, of managing such a case. Okay, because the patient was uh, ideally supposed to be taken for 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 craniectomy, probably on the same day uh, when the patient came, but because of the challenges that were there, the patient was taken to theater at uh, the eleven post admission. So. Uh, there's, there's, there's need for basic neurological procedure, uh, or rather basic neurological pr uh, procedures can play uh, a life-saving uh, role in patients with uh, traumatic brain injury. Then this is supposed to actually be done uh, timely and uh, in a safe manner, uh, unlike what, uh, what was done. Uh, then uh, it is important to ensure that surgical training actually uh, is uh, in in these settings like uh, new, uh, new, some some neurological procedures uh, is is uh, is is done. Then it is important to ensure provision of good surgical instruments uh, and easy accessibility to advanced diagnostic techniques, uh, which may be lacking in uh, some uh, in some of the low middle income countries. So. Like I mentioned that uh, Zambia is, is, is uh, uh, referred or graded as uh, uh, a middle income country. So we find that some of uh, the, some of the surgical uh, instruments or uh, there's, not so, uh, there's not so much availability of uh, certain diagnostic uh, uh, techniques so that uh, these, these uh, patients are managed uh, in a timely and, and safe manner. Okay. Next slide. Okay, so those are my references. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, excellent, Tawente. Thank you for putting all this together. Uh, and I'd like to just basically ask the neurosurgeons, have they ever been in a, in a hospital where you really didn't have, you only had the basic equipment? Marco, have you ever worked yeah. in a hospital yeah. like that? John, John, yeah. can we, before, before we start, um, with the questions, can we um, first of all give some feedback to to Darwin, um, please? Because he, I mean, he's a he's a medical student who's really interested. He wants to be a, a neurosurgeon, and there are a few things which I think will be helpful if you can get us feedback. And I noticed that there are yeah, a few well, things. Yeah, one of the things that I think he needs to hear is the experience of these neurosurgeons. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, Marco, yeah. have you ever uh, been at a at a challenged? Uh, hospital or you didn't have the equipment to use 
uh, well, in uh, basic my basic hospital, stuff. Mm. Well, in my hospital, uh, uh, we uh, fortunately we we are quite uh, uh, trained and prepared in neurosurgery. Uh, so for uh, emergency like a trauma. We have a good uh, uh, neurosurgery, a good intensive care unit. Uh, the only problem is uh, about brain uh, 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 in particular posterior circulation, uh, because we don't have an endovascular uh, unit. So uh, the only problem in a hospital is when you have an aneurysm, uh, like a basal tip, you need to move the patients. Uh, in an uh, endovascular uh, unit that is uh, in another hospital. So, uh, in this, uh, uh, for this aspect, this uh, uh, is a problem. But uh, um, for the rest, like spine, head trauma, uh, and other pathology, we are well equipped, and um, and our instrument uh, are. Uh, uh, are good enough to perform this surgery to guarantee this service. How about you, Mauricio? Have you ever been in a place where you're resource challenged? No, no, not, not anymore. I have a question to the colleague. How many uh, neurosurgeons are in Zambia? How many neurosurgical centers and are in Zambia? And how many neurosurgeons are, are in Zambia? for uh, 17 million people. Okay, uh, currently I think there are only uh, less than five neurosurgeons and there's only one center, which is the, the biggest hospital in Zambia, uh, the University Teaching Hospital in the capital city of Zambia. So uh, in my opinion, uh, um, beside the instrument, you, you almost for, this, for trauma, for such kind of, uh, of uh, uh, pathology, I think uh, you you have uh, enough. Uh, uh, you, you, of course, uh, uh, you have to improve, but I think there is enough enough technology to deal with uh, this kind of patient. Uh, for me, the, the main question is the the distance, the long distance, the um, the, the transportation to 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 the center. This this could be a, an issue. Okay. Okay, uh, any more okay, comments uh, or questions? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so uh, that is also another aspect of, uh, uh, of, of this case because uh, uh, where the patient was uh, and the center, there was, there's quite some distance. And uh, like I mentioned, the patient did not present to, uh, to the center or rather to the facility uh, almost immediately. So, uh, there's quite a distance to the center where, uh, where the patient uh, was managed. Okay, very yeah. good. Dr. Bennett? Okay. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Dr. Kubal. Okay, thank you so much, Darwin, for your case presentation. It was okay, uh, well done. I will give you a few comments, then um, you are a medical student. We are here yes, to help you. We are also students, yes, we are sure. being helped by our senior so mm. i will go through things which are very basic i will end with yes. those ones but uh, in terms of i will go backward so in terms of your prognosis okay. about your patient since the patient presented with aphasia and hemiparesis you should tell us about that prognosis how he improved in terms of aphasia and uh, hemiparesis and it was after how long okay then um, mm -hmm. Usually when you are presenting cases like that, please include pictures. The time you did your craniotomy, you take pictures in theater, you include, you tell us, we see how you do it. Okay, uh, that's also okay. good. Okay. Then um, uh, you said the CT scan was done, it was 22 days, uh, the MRI scan, sorry, 22 days after admission, uh, isn't it? No, af after, after the, the trauma. Incident. Did after you operate the, the, the patient the same day after the MRI scan? Uh, the patient was operated uh, the, the day after the MRI scan. The day after, it's okay. Then, yes. uh, like you were saying, IV fluids, which IV fluid did you give to that patient? You know, so the patient was you have to tell us details so we can see how okay. to help you. 
Okay, which type of fluid did you give and how often were you giving? So the patient was given a, a, a normal saline, uh, which was uh, uh, 2,500 uh, 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 meals in 24 hours. For 24 hours, it's okay. Uh, another thing uh, on your MRI, there was a very important finding, which you didn't mention, there was a midline shift. Uh, yes, yes. That's a very, very, yes. Then, uh, okay, talking about basal skull fracture on MRI, it's, it's not easy to see basal skull fracture. Bones are not good on MRI. It's better to do okay. CT scan, thin slice CT scan. So you can't talk about basal skull fracture on, uh, on, on MRI. Yeah. Okay. Not then, um, okay. now I'm coming to the interesting part of this talk, especially mm -hmm. you as a medical student. Your yes, history, you gave us two lines of history. I like history too much because for me, when I'm taking my history, after my history, I have already my, an idea about what is going on just after taking history. Can you tell us more mm -hmm. about the history? Then I'll give you the summary, how to take history in a head injury patient. Can you tell us more about the history of that patient? Okay, so the, the presenting complaints uh, in this patient were uh, inability to move uh, the, right, uh, lower, uh, the right lower limb and the right upper limb for 11 days. Then there was also inability to, uh, to talk. So the patient uh, was well until, uh, until 13 days prior presentation, okay, when he was, he was involved in a, an interpersonal uh, violence uh, after knocking off from work. So the, the wife reported that the patient could not uh, characterize uh, the objects that were used uh, in the incidents, but reported that they, they, uh, uh, they tried, uh, they, 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 the people that were involved, they tried to, uh, to strangle the patient. So uh, the patient was hit on the back of the head. Uh, there was no bleeding, uh, uh, but there was uh, a swelling on the side where he was, uh, he was hit. Uh, there was, there was also no uh, associated bleeding uh, from the ears uh, and, the, uh, and the nose or any discharge. So the wife reported that uh, on the day uh, the patient was, uh, uh, was involved in the interpersonal violence, uh, the patient was able to talk and was able to move uh, the right uh, leg as well as the arm. Uh, but uh, there, was, uh, there was associated general body pains and headache. Uh, then two days uh, after the incidents, uh, the patient woke up uh, with uh, with uh, with the, with the complaints that we've mentioned. That is, uh, uh, inability to uh, to talk and inability to move uh, uh, the, the 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 right uh, the right leg as well as the the right arm. Uh, then after, uh, the patient was taken to to a local general hospital, where I was uh, later referred to. Uh, to, to our facility, we, where he managed to, where he only managed to uh, to come uh, 11 days later. So um, the patient uh, only uh, opened bowels on the day uh, he was he was involved in the interpersonal violence, but he was uh, he, had, he had he had been able to pass urine uh, normally with uh, no abnormal color or discharge or any pain. Uh, so uh, the patient uh, had been feeding uh, pro uh, 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 well. There was no vomiting. There, there was there was one inc uh, there was one uh, incidence of vomiting. Uh, however, there was no history of uh, convulsions, uh, no hearing loss, uh, no loss of taste uh, for food or uh, any visual uh, vision disturbances. So, like I mentioned, uh, uh, there was nothing much on the systemic review. Uh, the respiratory system, there were no uh, any deformities that were detected. The cardiovascular system, there was no uh, any deformities. Uh, then the past med medical history was uh, this patient. This patient had, uh, has no relevant medical uh, uh, past medical history. Um, so maybe just uh, if I can give the summary of the of the history. So that is basically the, the history of, of the patient. I don't know if I can go into the examination as well. Okay. Um, let, let's uh, go in details about that history. Yeah. Okay. You know, fourth year, 
next year your final year you'll be writing you'll be doing your long case your short case you'll be presenting a case on your exams so yes. you said there was nothing uh, like the, the past issue was unremarkable there are things like we have to know past the important negatives. yes there are important negatives we, okay. we need to know like in this particular patient so let us go back to the to the, yes, to the history the patient was assaulted okay uh, what yes. time of the day where was he coming from or was it along the, the road uh, was he coming from okay uh, from work going back so, home, uh, so the patient night. was go ahead the win. okay so the patient was coming back from from work uh, he was coming back from work around uh, 19 hours and then he was uh, assaulted by unknown people who hit him on the back of the head with uh, an, an unknown object how many times It was just that once. Means? Once. One okay. time. So immediately, yes, did he lose time. consciousness soon after that? OK, so I, so I think I mentioned the, uh, there was no history of loss of consciousness. Uh, the patient only developed the, uh, uh, those two days after the incidents happened. So on the actual day, uh, the, only, the only complaint that was there was just having some some um, generalized body pains and headache, but there was no loss of consciousness uh, uh, or any other uh, or any other complaints. It's okay. So generally, uh, we that, that's now that's okay. That's detailed issue about that patient. So generally, we tend to divide those okay. patients into uh, motor vehicle accident, uh, then uh, into four or assault. Then in mm -hmm. motor vehicle accident, there are also three subcategories. Was the patient a passenger okay. or the patient <laughs> was a driver? That's mm -hmm. uh, the second one. The third one, if the patient was a pedestrian hit by a car. Okay. Mm -hmm. If the patient was a passenger in a car, we want to know where the patient was seated. Was he in the front seat, back seat? Was the patient restrained or not? Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, if the patient lost consciousness, consciousness immediately mm -hmm. after the, the, the accident. If the patient was a driver, mm -hmm. what happened? You look also for signs, uh, the speed uh, on which the patient was driving. Uh, how many mm -hmm. fatalities? If there were five, there were two who died on spot because we want to know the, fa the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the severity of that injury. That's why we want to know the fatalities, how many okay. fatalities, okay? Then uh, also, mm -hmm. The patient who was driving, what happened? The speed on which the patient was driving, because we had the mm -hmm. patient with the stroke, patient who had the stroke while driving. You know, you are driving okay. at 30 kilometers per hour, then you had the stroke, mm -hmm. or you start to fit, you have seizures while you are driving, then you hit mm -hmm. an object. Mm -hmm. Not because it was an accident, but because it was something wrong on you. Then uh, mm -hmm. they bring that okay. patient. People who are going to bring the patient, they will say he was involved in an accident. But if you take care yes. of your issue, you differentiate that patient from uh, like a seizure or a stroke or it was a real accident. Then um, mm -hmm. we want also, if the, the patient was hit by a car, it was a pedestrian, want to know was he crossing the road? Uh, which side of the body was he? Okay. How he landed? Uh, mm -hmm. Did he bleed? Did he fit? We want no issue of seizures. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the spot, if you okay. didn't fit, like you mentioned on your patient, there was no seizures. That's a very important negative uh, thing. Uh, on the history. Then uh, we have to know now the me if it's motor vehicle accident, we want to know the mechanism of injury. What happened to the car? Was it a head-on okay. collision? Uh, the patient mm -hmm. uh, lost control and veered off the road, or in he failed to negotiate a care. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> or he was overtaking another car, then uh, collided with uh, a car coming from opposite direction, or it was a best mm -hmm. tire, then the car overturned. Okay. So that's the mechanism mm -hmm. of injury. It's also very important when we are taking the history. Then um, okay. it's a four, it's a four. Okay, four from, from a height, we want to know how many meters. Uh, if you don't know the mm -hmm. meters from a building, you ask uh, which floor was that then uh, you can estimate if it's first floor usually it's around three meters second floor it's around about mm -hmm. six meters then you know 
if it was from a tree and you don't know how many meters, you can ask which type of tree the patient was. It can also help you okay. to estimate if it's an orange tree. You know that it's uh, about three meters and so on. So mm -hmm. with uh, that history, if it was an assault, like your patient, what time was that, that assault? Uh, where was the patient coming from? And they used what uh, you mentioned it, that uh, it was a known object. How many times the patient mm -hmm. was hit on mm -hmm. the head and uh, by how many uh, assailants? Mm -hmm. okay? Uh, okay. So those things with those details, you have an idea about oh. what is, what is uh, happening. So I was just going a bit fast okay. and giving most mm -hmm. important things when you are taking the history of, uh, of those patients. Normally, okay. like what I use, okay. if I don't know, because the, the, the period of loss of consciousness soon after the, the, the incident, it is affecting mm -hmm. the, the, the outcome. It is affecting yes, the yes. outcome. So That's we true. want to know for how mm -hmm. long, if there is issue of loss of consciousness, we want to know for how long mm -hmm. the patient lost consciousness. But mm -hmm. now, sometimes our patients are coming, they were brought in by war wishers, okay, was involved in an accident, or mm -hmm. was found like uh, on the road. Uh, without uh, eyewitness. If the patient is now conscious, you can talk to the patient, but don't ask how many hours, how many minutes, how many hours did you uh, lose consciousness because he won't know. But you mm -hmm. can ask uh, okay. questions like, um, when you regained consciousness, what did you see? Where were mm -hmm. you? It can help you. That mm -hmm. patient can help you to get a rough idea about how long the, 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 the loss okay. of consciousness okay. was. If the patient says, yes. okay, I was still at the scene of the accident, I could see the car where I was, I could see people around me, mm -hmm. and the ambulance, when it came, I was there, then you think, ah, this is like less than 30 minutes. No, I was already in the mm -hmm. ambulance, going to the hospital, we are in Africa, sometimes mm -hmm. ambulances are coming a bit late, so this is maybe mm -hmm. close to an hour. No, I was already at the hospital, then you think, like, this is maybe already after an hour. So, I think that uh, a summary for you, uh, just how to take history. Uh, and also when you are going in past medical issues, for your patient, the patient is 45 mm -hmm. male. Uh, 42. Even if the past history is not as uh, remarkable, we want to know, for example, yes. does he smoke? Does he drink alcohol? Because patients like that, okay. the moment you are admitting them, they won't smoke in the world, they won't drink mm -hmm. alcohol. They mm -hmm. might develop withdrawal syndrome in the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, which mm -hmm. you can miss easily and lose the patient. So, okay. yeah, that's my, my, my summary for you. Thank you. Right. Okay. Uh, maybe just a comment. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kabulo, for uh, those comments. Uh, uh, quite something that uh, very important. Uh, however, I think I must mention as well that uh, I tried to just make some sort of a summary for uh, this particular presentation. Otherwise, uh, on the actual day when I was taking the history and examining, I think got taken into consideration. Oh, okay, that that's great. So you should present everything. Since you're a medical student, when you are coming, just present, just bring the all clacking. Then we go through, we see how we can help you, where you can improve, and so on. So it was better to present everything. Maybe next time, if you get a case, just present everything. Okay, okay I'll do just that. Thank you. Ulrich, you have anything to say? Um, just, just one more thing. Um, so, the, Darren, um, for the next yes, time you're, you're available, can you present on craniotomies and craniectomies? Okay, I, I can do that. Just, just prepare the presentation. When you're ready, you let me know, and then we can schedule you. Uh, yeah, and Ulrich, I think a panelist said okay, he wanted. Sure. I'll, I'll panelist said he wanted to present Abdullah. Chimo, I don't know. Uh, Abdullah, yeah, he's, um, yeah, he's doing. Yeah, uh, I know him. We're speaking. Oh, okay. with, we're, in touch, we're in touch, and he said he would. He would, he would oh, try okay. and have a you know, taxi. We're already in touch. Oh, when great. He has time. Okay, great. Okay, everyone, thank you very much, and uh, we'll have this edited, and then uh, we'll send it to everyone. So thanks everyone for coming. <laughs>